There is one very important fact about the Civil War that for decades was left out of a good many history books and movies and articles written about the war between the states. And that is, in the Union forces of over two million men, almost 10 percent, almost 200,000 of those soldiers were black. They were African American and they had their own very special reasons to risk their lives and fight. It wasn't until January of 1863 that these men were even allowed to wear a uniform or carry a gun. But at the beginning of that year, Lincoln delivered his Emancipation Proclamation and the call went out. Men of color, to arms, to arms, now or never. This is our golden moment. The government of the United States calls for every able-bodied colored man to enter into the army for three years service and join in fighting the battles of liberty and the Union. Regiments were formed in Louisiana and South Carolina, New York, Pennsylvania, Kansas, and Missouri. But the most famous regiment was also one of the first, the Massachusetts 54th Infantry. In the North, these men were free. They didn't have to go. Each one was a volunteer. Many were well-educated with families and businesses they had to leave behind. And yet many in the North said black shouldn't be allowed into the army. They won't fight. They won't follow orders. If attacked, they'll surrender or just turn and run. It seems these men had something to prove, not to themselves, but to the rest of the world. Hey! Well, the men of the 54th, they knew that the whole world was watching them. For example, in the assault on Fort Wagner, it appeared in, in newspapers in London, newspapers in Paris, newspapers in, papers in Spain, newspapers in New York. The consensus was black men, they didn't want black men to fight. But they wanted to fight because they wanted to prove a point. So they had to fight for the right to fight. Or in other words, they had to fight for the right to die. These men are reenactors from K Company of the Massachusetts 54th. They're from Georgia. James Hayes is an accountant at Home Depot. Bob English is a real estate agent in Decatur. Ray Wozniak works at the state prison in Jackson. He plays a white officer because, in fact, all the officers of the regiment back then were white. One of the stories they tell is about the regiment's first major battle, shown in the movie Glory, the assault on Fort Wagner in South Carolina. It was a hellish battle on the beaches of South Carolina. The Confederate troops had cannons and grenades and the protection of the walls of Fort Wagner. The attacking Federal soldiers had nothing to hide behind except the dead or the brave men in front of them. And there was one brave man in particular who carried the battle flag for the Massachusetts 54th, the first black American to win the nation's highest award, the Congressional Medal of Honor. His name was Sergeant William Kearney, but before you hear his story, you need to know just how important the regimental flag was. In the midst of battle, seeing it, not letting the enemy take it, that meant everything to soldiers back then. It's the soul of the regiment, your flag is. It was inscribed with all the battles you fought in. It, it was a sacred token, both for northern and southern forces, of, of, of uh, who you were, what state you were from, what battles you had fought in, what, how you had fought and bled and died and suffered in, in circumstances like we are out here t today, in the rain and the cold. These men lived outdoors 365 days a year, uh, slept in the mud and, uh, and uh, the rain and the heat, and we don't know how they did it these days. And so when you would see the flag coming, it was like, that's us. In that terrible battle, there's a scene where the flag bearer is killed and another man picks it up and continues the charge. That man was Sergeant William Kearney. Sergeant Kearney was able to see your colors and place them at the top of the fort as the men of the 54th came streaming into the fort, attacking the enemy. Without the support that the 54th needed, they were eventually pushed back out of the fort. Sergeant Kearney was able to retrieve the flag, but in doing so, he was wounded five times in the legs, in the arm, and in the head. 
Several of the men the next morning were in the hospital tent and they were talking about the heroics of Sergeant Carney. But one of them stated he had seen Sergeant Carney laying on the sand <laughs> with this head wound. So they assumed that he was dead. And as it spoke of him in the past tense, just then Sergeant Carney came staggering in the tent with the flag draped over his shoulder. And he said, the old flag never touched the ground, boys. It never touched the ground. So Sergeant Carney was a true American hero that every American has the right to be proud of. On the edge of Boston Commons, a park in downtown Boston, Massachusetts, there is a memorial to the men of the 54th, erected almost 100 years ago. The inscription reads, together they gave to the nation and the world undying proof that Americans of African descent possess the pride, courage, and devotion of the patriot soldier. 180,000 such Americans enlisted under the Union flag. And one in five of those men never made it home. <laughs>